Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for making it to London today. Thanks for making it to the very special Wembley Stadium. Um, I guess we're a little bit spoilt now. I remember first walking out onto that pitch at a press conference. Rob, you were there as well for Carl Froch against George Groves. Obviously, we came back here for Anthony Joshua against Vladimir Klitschko. And now we're back again, September the 22nd at the National Stadium in front of 90,000 people. And then hopefully back again in April 13th. 2019. But right now, it's all about what we believe the toughest test of Anthony Joshua's career so far against Alexander Povetkin, the number one challenger, number one with the WBA, number one with the WBO, former Olympic gold medalist, former heavyweight champion of the world. Only one defeat to the great Vladimir Klitschko on points and a, a great team of people. I'm delighted to welcome Vadim Kornilov and, of course, welcome to the team of Andre Rybinski and World of Boxing. They've been a pleasure to work with. And welcome as well to, to Alexander Povetkin, a, a fine, fine fighter and a real test for Anthony Joshua on September the 22nd. Like I said, we want to thank everybody involved in making this possible. It wouldn't be possible without our host broadcaster, Sky Sports, who have backed Anthony Joshua from his professional debut. Uh, American partners, The Zone as well. We had a great press conference in New York yesterday. And really, I think we all need to just take heed of what's happening in boxing right now, to be able to stage these mega events that really are the envy of people all around the world. And we're doing it here, we're British and we're proud, and it's a great time for British boxing, and we can't wait for the 22nd. Um, of course, you've met the Povetkin team. Here we have the unified heavyweight world champion, WBO, IBF, WBA and IBO heavyweight world champion. Um, now OBE and Mr. MBE down the bottom, <laughs> Rob McCracken, who, of course, long-term trainer of Anthony Joshua and responsible for all the success of the GB squad as well. I'm going to pass over to the head of boxing for Sky Sports, Adam Smith, to talk from his side and also ask questions for people at this top table. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, it's wonderful to be back at Wembley Stadium. What a fantastic night we had here when Anthony Joshua beat Vladimir Klitschko in that epic fight, one of the great heavyweight fights uh, of recent times. It's superb to be back at the National Stadium, what, 90,000 there, September the 22nd. And I believe this is, without doubt, one of the most dangerous assignments for, for Anthony Joshua to take on. The mandatory with the WBA, probably the third best heavyweight in the world, although he'd argue that he's the best. Take Deontay Wilder out, you know, that super fight is going to take time to make. Alexander Povetkin, he, just look at his pedigree. A wonderful amateur career, Olympic gold medalist, double European amateur champion, world champion, and he's won 34 of 35 as a pro. We saw what he did to David Price uh, on the AJ Parker night, and uh, I think he brings a lot of heat. I think he brings a, a phenomenal boxing brain, a great team behind him, and, and a left hook that uh, Joshua's got to be very, very careful about. But... Um, Listen, it's great to have Anthony back again uh, at a stadium. It's, it's wonderful. You know, we've had him at Wembley. We've had him twice down at the Principality in Cardiff. We just love AJ Knights. And uh, I think they're, uh, they've taken boxing to a completely different level. You know, Carl Froch will, uh, will still tell me that the 80,000 that he, uh, he brought here with George Groves was, uh, was a one-off. But look, we're moving on. And I think the heavyweight division is, uh, is fantastic at the moment. And uh, September the 22nd is going to be a wonderful night on Sky Box Office. We've got a pretty good night on July the 28th at the O2 with uh, Dillian White and uh, Joseph Parker, of course. That's a real pick em in 10 days' time. But let's get hold of uh, Anthony straight away. Um, fresh in, back from New York. Obviously, a big press conference out there yesterday. Um, let's not talk Gerald Miller. Let's talk Alexander Povetkin. That's why we're here. How dangerous is Povetkin and how seriously will you have to take him? Yeah, uh, Alexander Povetkin, as you mentioned, um, gold medalist, unbelievable pedigree. It's come through the professional rankings uh, very well. I've watched him for a long time. And, uh, you know, nowadays, I think the uh, industry of boxing in terms of the fan base is a lot different. So maybe because um, first language might not be English or the social media might not be the most dominant, people should never underestimate a fighter due to fan base and stuff like that. Alexander Povetkin is one of the best fighters um, that I'll be facing on my record. And I look forward to it as well, actually. 
Um, he's got a style that I enjoy competing with. I have no problem with um, left hooks, right hands, defending the counter and uh, box at range as well. So it should be good. I'm sure the undercard will be packed. And you know what? Um, Gerald Miller, uh, Wilder. I had the issues with, like with Parker. Um, it seems that there's always been a lot going on around my fights. You know, I've always had a fight to focus on, but there's always been a fight book next. Like if you beat Molina, you're going to fight Klitschko. Klitschko's sitting ringside. So I've always had that issue. And I've found it quite interesting, and I've tried to understand how to deal with these things. And over the last uh, few years, I've been fighting 10 years now, and I feel I've always done it for fun. And I've just had fun with it because I, I preferred the lifestyle it presented me. And now I'm dead serious about this business. And uh, this is chapter two for me. And uh, Vetkin is the first on my list. So that doesn't bother you all the talk of, of Wilder, these, this being a potential banana skin, I guess. You know, the, the, the upsets in heavyweight history littered with them, of course. You know, at Wembley Arena, Lennox Lewis losing to Oliver McCall in, mm. in a fight everybody thought he was going to win. Mm. Um, it's just about Alexander Povetkin for you and Rob. It's just concentrating on him. Not anymore. It, it was that before. I used to concentrate on the opponents. And um, as I said, it was like, it was always worrying about what was next. So I'd be like, oh, I don't want to make no mistakes with this opponent. And I started boxing within myself. I never used, I stopped expressing myself and, you know, my, um, my potential to go on and be a great heavyweight champion. Even though I have these titles, it's about proving your stock worth every time you fight. And um, now it's not just about Povetkin, it's not just about Wilder. It's about me, my legacy, and reaching my potential. So all comers are welcome. And as I said, in this chapter where my mindset is different because I understand what I'm involved in, um, Alexander is the first person on my list. What's been the difference, though, that's made you do that, the, the growing maturity as you reign as a, a world heavyweight champion with all those belts in front of you? What's been that difference? I spend a lot of time studying and I spend a lot of time looking in the mirror at myself. I don't... Um, and, and I listen to Rob as well. And then um, I'm not too interested in, like, the praise or the criticism, I just have to look at myself. And then sooner or later, if you look in the mirror hard enough, you'll find the answers of who you really are and what you're trying to achieve. Um, and I've been doing that since I started boxing. And as I said, I, I only box for fun. I, I went to boxing because it taught me discipline, to control egos, keep humble. And I've always said that. And uh, now it's more about, I know I'm good at this. And uh, if, I, if I, I've built my mindset over the last 10 years, now I feel very, very confident. And um, I've learned about my weight, my boxing style. And as I said, this is a, a new chapter. I think I've got 10 years left in boxing and I want to really cement my legacy. You really believe that, 10 years? Yeah, because I think now science, information, um, and people have done it, Foreman, Bernard Hopkins, and my last, well, my friend now, Klitschko, went on to, to 40. May have ever done it. So uh, I believe I can as well. Vladimir Klitschko, of course, April last year was a thunderous fight. Do you predict something similar with the style of Alexander Povetkin on September the 22nd? Riddick Bowen Holyfield. Because, <laughs> um, you know, when you've got like a, a, a brawler, I know Alex can box. There's no doubt about that. He wouldn't have done what he'd done in the amateurs and as a professional if he couldn't. But in terms of like the style, the, the, the solid base, the gravity on your feet and then he can swing hooks um, versus uh, someone who's more like European style, English style, upright, hit, be first, move back, be second. It creates a great fight. And I think with those two styles and the mindsets now where I can't afford to get beat and Alex thinks he can beat me, will definitely gel for an interesting type of uh, matchup. Yeah, we all love the Riddick Bowe van der Holyfield trilogy. Let's bring Alexander Povetkin in. Uh, Alexander, welcome uh, to London. Fantastic to, to have you here. This is the big opportunity. You've been waiting a, a long time. We, we saw you in, in Cardiff beat David Price. How confident, first of all, are you and the team of uh, upsetting the odds and, and taking out Anthony Joshua here in front of his home crowd? Добрый день. Вы знаете, я очень рад, что состоится этот поединок, потому что я считаю, что Энтони один из самых сильнейших сейчас в мире. 
и он это не раз доказал. И, наверное, каждый боксер, который тренируется, идет к тому, чтобы встретиться с самым сильным. Вот я очень рад, что это произошло. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for your uh, warm welcome. Um, in regards to the upcoming fight, I want to say that Anthony Joshua has proved he's one of the strongest fighters here, and I'm very excited about this fight. We both of us been training very hard and before of it. How do you beat Anthony Joshua? Uh, no one's done it yet. Um, what are the tools that you believe you possess? Uh, is it the pedigree, the, the experience you've had over the years? What do you bring to the table that's different to the other fighters that have faced Joshua before? Как вы собираетесь победить Антона Джошуа? Никто этого не делал заранее. Есть ли у вас какой-то определенный стиль, стратегия, или вы преподнесете что-то новое? Вы знаете, мы нарабатываем технические действия, которые постараемся выполнить в бою. Я понимаю, что Антон Джошуа на данном момент чемпион мира, что простого боя не будет, но мы к этому готовы. You know, this fight will be all about experience. I am aware that Anthony Joshua is a world champion, but we've been training hard and we're ready for this fight. You've been a world champion before, but there's a, a number of, of titles there. What's the, the motivation, the ambition for you, uh, Alexander? Is it to, to clean up and then take on Wilder and, and try and become the undisputed, unified heavyweight king? Вы знаете, для меня мотивация есть уже то, что он чемпион мира и что он является сильнейшим боксером. Вот это для меня, наверное, самая основная мотивация. The best motivation for myself would be uh, the knowing that he is the world champion and I will be fighting him very soon. Let's bring Vadim in. Vadim, tell us a little bit about the, the team behind Alexander, about the camp that he's going to have uh, in Russia and, uh, and how dedicated this this athlete is and has been over the years? I would say that uh, there's no question that uh, come September 22nd, um, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna see all the hype that we've seen so far from um, you know, Wilder, Miller yesterday. Uh, this fight is probably not gonna accompany a lot of that because both of these guys are, um, they're both gentlemen and they're very respectful of each other. They're respectful of, of everybody. Um, but there's no doubt that this is going to be probably one of the um, one of the best fights we're going to see. And uh, you know, we we all saw Joshua against Klitschko, which many consider to be you know fight of the year. It, it was just one of those one of those fights nobody's going to forget. And uh, this is the type of fight that this could be, and most likely it will be because we have two of the best meeting each other in the ring. It's not just talk. It's you know all the talk they're going to do is going to happen fight night. Um, you know, Alexander is going to go as always, uh, into the Russian mountains to do his camp. Um, he's done that for most of his, uh, you know, latest fights in, in his career. Um, his manager, Dmitry Ivanov, his uh, trainer, Ivan Kirpa, um, are working hard already on uh, getting the right sparring partners, preparing the right type of uh, training camp. And uh, there's no doubt, you know, Alexander Povetkin, as Anthony Joshua, are going to be 100% ready. Um, we all know that at the end of the day, you know, if Anthony Joshua had a choice, he would probably not choose Povetkin for this fight. Maybe if uh, Alexander Povetkin had a choice, he would probably maybe choose another opponent. But that's what makes this fight very interesting. I think, uh, you, know, it's, you know, it's probably the two best guys, maybe, maybe pound for pound, meeting each other in the ring. And uh, I think all the attention is going to be their fight night. You know, yesterday, um, Miller tried to steal the show at the press conference in New York. Um, we all understand it's, it's just a lot of PR that these guys are trying to get to, to attract attention to themselves. At the end of the day, most of these guys that are talking don't even want to be in the ring with either of these guys. And these guys are both uh, the type of guys that uh, love a challenge. And, you know, as Anthony said, um, he knows what he's in for. So does Alexander. But they both love a challenge, they love boxing, and they want to prove themselves. And I just want to say that, um, you know, it's been a pleasure. We've had a, a couple of mishaps, uh, you know, it was, it was not as easy trying to make this fight as, as usually it is with other things that we've done with uh, Matchroom and Eddie. Um, it was a little more difficult, but, um, you know, it's that type of fight. And uh, it, 
in any case, it was a pleasure and uh, everything went very well and we look forward to a great, great event. It's a real fight. It's a really good fight. And uh, Alexander will be in the Russian mountains. Uh, Anthony will be up in Sheffield uh, alongside Robert McCracken, uh, as always. Rob, it's, it's a real one, this, isn't it? It's a dangerous one. Yeah, it's a real fight. Two former Olympic champions, um, current world champion, former world champion. It's a stadium fight. And the reality is, is you know, if you're going to box at Wembley Stadium, you've got to fight the best. And that's what Anthony's happy to do. He's showed that in, in choosing to fight Povetkin next. And it's going to be a great fight. You've obviously experienced Wembley a fair few times yourself. How do you think that will affect Team Povetkin? Obviously, he's well-travelled as an amateur and uh, he'll bring everything, won't he? He's been to Wales, he's, he's fought on that, that stage as well. Yeah, he's very experienced. I don't think it'll overly phase him, but obviously the challenge of boxing Anthony Joshua, 10 years younger, height, reach, power, ability, um, will we'll show during the fight. But Povetkin, he'll go to the Russian mountains. He's technically very good. He's got good power as well. He's got a very good jab that's underrated. So Anthony and myself will take him deadly serious. We'll prepare diligently for, for the challenge. And we expect, ex expect a real challenge on September, September 22nd. Yeah, as Vadim says, maybe both fighters wouldn't have chosen each other, but it's been mandated. Would you have chosen it as a fight for, for AJ? I honestly think that at this stage in Anthony's career, um, we would have because Povetkin's a tremendous fighter. He's been a world champion. If you're going to stay at the top, and Anthony wants to have a legacy, he wants to become a boxing great. He really does. That's his ambition because he's achieved so much already. This shows what he's about. And fighting that somebody like Povetkin will give you the kudos of, of, of challenging him, hopefully beating him, and then we'll take you to the next level. And then you'll, you'll defend more comfortably in the future against awkward opponents and, and technically good opponents. Yeah, different style as always. Vladimir Klitschko, then Carlos Takam, although you were preparing for Kubrat Pule for that one. Then Joe Park is something a bit different. W what are you going to do in the camp that is, you know, specifically for Alexander Povetkin? Sparring partners, uh, AJ's weight, what's going to be different for this one? I think his weight's good already. He's, he's lighter than when he fought Carlos Takam and he hasn't even gone into full camp yet. I think the opponent's very different. He's technically good. He's coming to win. He, he's not going to be phased. We saw that in the Klitschko fight. It was a hard, hard fight, and he stayed in there, and he was looking for a way to win all the way through. So, you know, we'll get the right sparring partners in, and we'll work on, on the right drills, and we'll, we'll get Anthony in the best of shape. So on the night, it happens. It flows naturally, and it'll be a great fight, and I'm sure Povetkin will give it 100%, but we're very confident. Anthony, let's finish with you. Um, obviously, being in New York, back here at, at Wembley, stadium fights all the time. What is this doing for boxing generally, you know, both in the USA, in the UK, these huge shows? Um, first of all, how much are you privileged to be sort of leading the way? And, and what do you think it's doing for, for the young getting into the sport? I mean, it surely can only be massive for it. Yeah, it remember, it takes, like, it takes all of us, all of us on this table... Um, everyone out there to kind of bring the sport to where it is. Boxing's a giant in itself. And, um, but also, when I first turned professional, I do remember that it was a bit stagnant and um, there wasn't the investment that was needed into boxing. So we worked tirelessly. In the UK, I'm not talking about anywhere else, but in the UK we worked tirelessly. Um, and I think that, you know, competition is important to get the interest. Good fights, good names... Um, will generate the interest. So I feel it must be difficult for Eddie as well or other promoters because they have fighters that want to go to the big time but don't want to fight people. So how can you balance that? So I just realised that if I want to get to the big time, I'm going to have to take risks early on in my career. You know, I've been dropped. I've been 12 rounds. Um, I've, I've put on weight. I've lost weight. I've trained certain ways that I shouldn't have. I've learned about boxing-specific training. And I'm a lot more experienced, I'm older. And so when I talk about things like, um, it's not about him, him or him anymore, I think it reverts me back to my reflection on the amateurs is when you're going to the World Championships or the Olympics, I have to look at that end goal of getting that gold medal for my country. So it's not just about, oh, I've got to fight this person, that person, that person. You know what I mean? There's a tournament, and I feel like right now I'm back in the tournament stage where I have to get through Povetkin, and I have to get through Wilder, and I have to get through who's next in order to create this legacy. And um, it's great because people can relate to that and they're part of this journey right now. It's resonating with the Americans, with the Russians, with the English. 
with the Africans. Um, it's, it's a great time for boxing. And um, I wouldn't say I'm leading the way because, as I said, I feel like we're all pushing this forward. And it's interesting to see who else is with me on this journey, not for the hype, but for the tough challenges and real competition. And finally, you, you've, you put your flag in the sand and said it's, it's London, it's Wembley, the next two fights. It's September 22nd, it's April the 13th. So the, the, the British supporters, your, your followers, are going to be hugely excited about the next few months, aren't they? Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. I just hope that the tickets sell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Eddie's got any worries yeah. there. Don't worry too much about that. Talking of tickets, they go on sale Monday on pre-sale, Tuesday on general sale. I just want to echo what's been said here again, and thanks to Vadim for those words as well. These are two, two great fighters who love a challenge. And we do live in a sport full of hype, We've seen that particularly over the last 24 hours, but Alexander's been there, he's done it, he's, he's fought some great fighters as well, but this young man is a phenomenon and all those things he says he's learned in his career, he's had 21 fights. And if you want to take an independent ranking system like the Ring Magazine, in his last fight he boxed number three, which was Joseph Parker. This time he's boxing number three again. He boxed number one in Vladimir Klitschko at the time. He's beaten number six in Dillian White. He's beaten number seven in Dominic Brazil. He's beaten, at the time, I think number nine in Carlos Takam. He's had 21 fights. The pace that this young man is moving at and the challenge that he is willing to accept and take is fantastic for the sport of boxing because we know he could sell out this stadium in a much, much, much easier fight. Anthony Joshua doesn't want that. He wants to create a legacy, and you're only doing that by, do that by beating great fighters. So thanks for all being part of this today. We're going to have a one head-to-head uh, -head up here. Then we're going to go out onto the pitch for another head-to-head. -head, and then we're going to have uh, all you guys going to get a chance to speak to both fighters as well. So thanks for coming, and we look forward to another huge night for British boxing on September the 22nd. Thank you.